welcome to a new episode of Mood India. That was Kuchipudi, an Indian classical dance from state of Andhra Pradesh in East India. Indian classical dance has a, a very ancient tradition. Since the second century BC, there have been uh, works mentioning dance as a part of drama. Later on in this third century AD, there was a treatise devoted only to dance. That was Abhinay Darpan. Abhinay Darpan talked about an elaborate vocabulary for a gesture dance that could be used to narrate all kinds of stories from Indian mythology, from the epics of Ramayana and Mahabharata. And these texts were used as the foundation for developing different Indian classical dance styles. Each region took a different aspect of these uh, theories and developed its own separate style. Today, we talk about Kuchipuri. And for that, we have in our studio, Jyoti Lakaraju, a Bay Area resident for 15 years, a performing artist, a teacher, founder, and artistic director of Natyale Kuchipuri School of Dance. Hello, Jyoti. Hello, Rinda. Welcome to Mood India. Thank you. W want to know, how did you start dancing? Well, Rinda, uh, contrary to the normal thinking that you have to start dancing at a very tender age, I started when I was nine years old. Um, I used to live in Guntur with my father and mother. Um, and uh, I started uh, learning dance under Sri Chinta Radha Krishnamurti. Mm -hmm. uh, for about five years, I've learned from him and then later on continued with his son, uh, Sri Chinta Adinarina Sarma. Was that Kuchipuri? It was the Kuchipuri style. Mm -hmm. uh, but during this period, I also uh, used to attend the music college. Uh, which was a uh, resident music school there, uh, which used to teach all types of fine arts like vocal, string instruments, uh, dance, different styles of dance. In fact, they used to teach both Bharatanatyam, Kuchipudi, uh, as well as Kathak, mm -hmm. and uh, some other, oh yes, uh, Sanskrit also at the same time. Uh, so I used to go to that So that school. was the ancient language, and the language of the arts, I guess. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so I used to go to the school um, every day. Actually, it's, it was a part of our education. It's a day-to-day -day, um, uh, part of our lives, going to regular school in the morning, com coming back uh, home around 4 o'clock, and then by 5, go to the music school and then uh, learn uh, vocal. I used to learn vocal, um, also an ancient string instrument called veena, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Bharatanatyam, uh, and then uh, come home and then go back to our regular studies. So when did Kuchipudi get its distinctive character as Kuchipudi? Uh, um, according to the scholars, it's around the 13th century, uh, Kuchipudi has been established as a dance school uh, by Siddhendra Yogi. Uh, still, there are some uh, uh, difference, difference of opinions among the scholars. They're not able to pinpoint uh, about uh, uh, whether Siddhendra Yogi belonged to 13th century or between the 13th century or the 18th century. But more, uh, I would like to concentrate more on how he has uh, uh, dedicated his life to uh, evolve Kuchipudi as, uh, more as a dance uh, form. Um, it, it, just like any other classical dance, it's uh, based on uh, uh, Indian mythology. Uh, it depicts uh, stories from uh, our great epics like Bharata, uh, Mahabharata and uh, Ramayana. Um, it uh, uses Sanskrit and Telugu mm -hmm. uh, as a mode of uh, communication, the language which is used. Uh, though now in uh, the recent times, we have been using other languages also. But since um, Kuchipudi, mainly when it was uh, still evolving into a dance, a uh, school of dance, uh, it was mainly taught among the Brahmin boys, and uh, they just moved from uh, or uh, propagated it just around the villages which were close to where they used to live and not move uh, far away and then. Um, so was it done in the temples? Was this dance dance in temples or was it done for general village audiences? It was mainly done in the temples by Devadasis. Mm -hmm. uh, or the who women. Who are Devadasis? Devadasis are the women who were dedic who dedicated their lives to the temple deities. Um, 
they they were not like the regular girls or the women in a regular uh, social life. Um, and the, these were the only women who were allowed to dance, in fact. Uh, dance was only taught amongst the men. And uh, uh, of course, they used to dance. There was never a regulation that it has to be done on a proper stage. Wherever there was little elevation, for example, a temple or um, underneath a tree, if there was a, a little elevation of the ground, they used to go there and uh, perform this uh, uh, wonderful dance drama. Mm -hmm. And uh, the male, uh, males used to portray both the characters of the female and the male. So what kind of music did they use? Uh, they used uh, uh, Carnatic music, which is uh, classical Indian uh, music. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, they used to use uh, Telugu language as well as Sanskrit. And uh, they were very well versed in uh, both these languages. And since this was interior part of uh, Andhra Pradesh and most towards the su southern part, um, they wanted uh, the laymen also to understand. So they, they did not go beyond um, Telugu and Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. So they still told stories. They told stories in a wonderful narrative style. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, uh, Kuchibudi dance style mainly focused uh, before it uh, uh, evolved into a solo uh, form, uh, it was mainly done as a dance drama, um, and not much a focus was given to the technique mm -hmm. or the style of the dance, but more importance was given for the abhinaya or the expressions mm -hmm. which conveyed all the emotions through the face and the language. Did you use the gesture language gesture while lang you did, did the dialogues? Gesture language was widely used, uh, but most of it was done through the eyes and uh, the narrative speech. Can you demonstrate a little dialogue? Um, I can take a piece from Bhama Kalapam, written by Siddhendra Yogi. Uh, this is a piece where it is a dialogue, in fact, between Satya Bhama and uh, her friend Madhavi. Who is Satya Bhama? Satya Bhama is the wife of Lord Krishna. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a fight. And so Krishna walks away from Satyabhama. So Satyabhama goes and looks for him, and she can't find him. S so she implores her friend Madhavi to go and seek her husband. Then Madhavi says, actually with a humor, uh, humorously she asks, Oh Satyabhama, me swami varu, ye rupu varu, ye rekha varu, nakasika pariyantaramu. What does that mean? It means, Oh Satya Bhama, I will for sure look for your Lord, but you need to describe him for me. And that too, from toe, uh, head to toe and toe to head, leaving no details. Then what does Satya Bhama say? Satya Bhama says, Oh Sakhi, Na Swami Varu Makara Kundalam Lutharin Chana Tuvanti Vare Oyama. Meaning, O oh friend, my Lord is the one who wears the distinguished earrings. Na Swami Varu Shankamudharin Chana Tuvanti Vare. Meaning, he is the one who holds the conch. Chakramudarinchina to Antivare Sakhi. O oh friend, he is the one who holds the desk. Then Madhavi responds, Hmm. Chakramudarinchina to Antivaru. Ah, Kumarival and Tichinavadu Kadate. Again, she includes a little humor saying, Oh Satyabama, I hope he is not. He doesn't belong to the Potter family there. <laughs> so does this, does this happen even today? It happens even today. Um, when I perform uh, Bhama Kalapam on the stage, uh, uh, but actually this is done to a variety of audience. Uh, since it uh, needs a little more uh, understanding of the knowledge and also respect for the traditions, uh, not a contemporary theme, but the most uh, very intricate, uh, uh, traditional piece. Understanding of the mythology. Understanding of the mythology, appreciation to put towards the mythology. Um, for that audience, I not only do the uh, the dance part of uh, Bhama Kalapam, 
but also the narrative pieces of Bhama Kalapam. Actually, Bhama Kalapam is a is uh, done in sequence. Um, it has uh, different uh, uh, moods and variations. Mm -hmm. So the like the entrance piece is in a Darvu format, which is very um, distinguished uh, characteristic of Kuchipudi, mm -hmm. where the character mm -hmm. enters the stage, the dancer enters the stage and introduces herself mm -hmm. as the character she is portraying. Mm -hmm. um, after that, this piece continues where the piece which I demonstrated continues where Satya Bhama goes and implores her um, friend mm -hmm. to seek her lot. So now, if it becomes a solo dance, you is the style modified? The style is modified in the sense it has um, it is more stylized right now um, through the changing times. The dance form as itself has become more stylized and also it has become more technically oriented which was uh, during the olden times it was there was not that much of importance given to the technique but more so for the uh, uh, abhinaya or the, um, the expression expressions so i hear that uh, your student sonia is here to to do the bhama kalapam for us sonia who is uh, one of my senior students is here for her summer break uh, she will be demonstrating uh, Bhama Kalapam. The entrance piece are called the Pravesh Darvu, mm -hmm. where Satya Bhama enters the stage, introducing herself mm -hmm. as the wife of Lord Krishna mm -hmm. and the daughter of uh, King Satrajitu, mm -hmm. telling that her, t uh, describing herself as the most beautiful amongst his 16,000 wives, Krishna's 16,000 wives. Okay. Um, Satya Bhama is said to be very uh, self-confident as well as sort of uh, uh, arrogant. Uh, she was very, not very- Not definitely not modest. Not definitely not modest. She was um, very, very um, uh, proud mm. of her uh, beauty mm -hmm. and also her um, seven weeks of jewelry. She had jewelry for each day in a week and given for seven weeks so she describes that also mm -hmm. in her uh, dance and says um, I'm like a budding flower different types of she compares herself with different types of flowers mm -hmm. and she says I the daughter of King Satrajitu uh, am suffering with pangs of love or th pangs of separation from Lord Krishna mm -hmm. uh, so, so why isn't he here where has he gone okay so Bhama Kalapum by Sonia Pravita Pravesh Darwo. Let 
What happens to the technique part of the dance? How has that changed? Um, is there a way we can show that? Um, yes, certainly we can show, show that. But before that, I would like to say um, a couple of things. Um, it has a very distinctive style where uh, the body movements are very, very sensuous. Mm -hmm. uh, it moves like uh, it has an up and down wave-like format mm -hmm. and uh, we, our feet will be vigorously uh, doing the third speed or I mean it, it's a rhythm which is set we do the first speed and the second speed and the third speed when the feet are moving vigorous in a vigorous uh, intricate format the upper body will be still will be doing the movements very gracefully lilting. with the lilting movements exactly okay um, I also have seen the the plate and the part over the head. That's right. That's also the distinctive aspect of Kuchipudi, I guess. Exactly. It is uh, uh, it, 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 the plate uh, and the uh, part dance is done only in Kuchipudi style. Mm -hmm. uh, this is typically put to uh, Saint Narayana Tirtha. He is one of the composers mm -hmm. uh, in Telugu language. He has written many, many uh, tarangams. All his compositions are called tarangams. And uh, we intersperse that. Mm -hmm. The tarangam, in midst of the tarangam, we go ahead and dance, uh, uh, where the dancer is actually dancing on the edges of the bra brass um, uh, plate, on the rim of the brass plate, while balancing a pot full of water on her head. Um, I have Sonia here demonstrating uh, the one of the excerpts from tarangam, mm -hmm. uh, typically the, uh, 
dance where she's uh, dancing on the brass plate with, with the um, uh, pot full of water on her head. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, I'll also show a couple of steps. Mm -hmm. um, the basic step where you can see the movement, how the body moves up and down, and also a typical jati or a rhythmic sequence, uh, which contains a lot of syllables which are said in dance. Mm -hmm. These syllables don't have any particular meaning. They mm -hmm. just have a rhythm to it. And uh, I can show you that too. That's great. Tam Tate, Te hit the ta, Te he, he tuck, Tam Tate, Te hit the ta, Te he, he tuck, Tam. Ta cut to tin the tin the tea. To the kit tuck at ta, the cut to tin the din the tea. To the kit tuck at ta, the to tin the din the ra, the cut to tin the din the ra, cut to the din the cut to. The dinder, the to dinder, 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 the 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 dinder, Vasavadinu te kupan, 
Great to have you in the studio here. Thank you very much. That's all for today's episode of Mood India. Hope you can have you will join us for the next episode. For all of us here, I'm Vrinda Bhandarkar. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>